Simply Scuba presents the Deco Stop Podcast. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Deco Stop Podcast. I'm Mark. I'm joined as ever with Shawnee Sean. Uh, your best friend, official number one. Well, you're well, I, don't know. Friend, yeah, I you're... don't know. You're... <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. I've had mixed signals in the past about uh, that. And also, as well, based on now you're my best friend, can uh, you give me your discount code? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be no more mentions of my staff discount code. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so we're here to talk everything and anything about scuba diving um, once again. So thank you for joining us. Um, first of all, talking about website updates to the Simply Scuba website. Uh, so the first thing is, is that we are expecting a huge Apex and Aqualung um, drop because they've got all sorts of new and shiny bits and bobs arriving. Um, so we placed a big, big big order and uh, i think that's arrived in the warehouse it's just getting the warehouse to physically open up all of these boxes and scan all the barcodes the the memo well, it's not happening no 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 we've got a massive apex aqualung drop but they're all key rings oh yeah thousands <laughs> hundreds of thousands of key rings and it's and it's the the old apex logo <laughs> yes. it's, it it doesn't even apply anymore oh no <laughs> they'll sell <laughs> They'll sell. Pe- people like the Apex logo. They're all made out uh, of plastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Aqualung have changed their logo recently. They've, they've changed everything, yeah. Yeah, it's it's got a funky Q. Um, and I think now, technically, it's one word, I think. They don't, don't like even get Aqu- me started with the Aqualung that I am... S- from a video Aqua editing space and putting it online <laughs> and tagging it. It is the, the worst. Bit. Like, one week, it's two. Yep. Next week, is, I've literally had meetings with our old boss about yeah. whether well, Aqualung is one word, two words. And like, even it, it, got, it got even so uh, to the point where you, where you put tags in and all that sort of thing, you know, you get you get SEO scores. And like, you type in Aqualung as one word or two words, and it's just, just basically just comes up with a big old question mark with, I don't know. <laughs> and you, yeah, I both. don't know if this works. <laughs> And then also, yeah. as well, if it's two words, if it's one word, then technically the L in lung shouldn't be capped. capped but I capitalized. Know, but I know in previous incarnations where it has been one word, it has been capped. And I'm like, well, what do I do? Yeah, yeah. Well, well I had that with the um, one of the previous guys at Simply Scooter, and he said, that, well, no, wetsuit should be two separate words. It's like, no, because then it's literally a, a, wet a wet suit. suit. <laughs> Not a wetsuit. Um, I was like, well, well, surely dry suit. He's like, no, 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 dry suit is one word. Like, well, well, why is dry suit one word, oh, but wet suit is two words? <laughs> He's wetsuitist. <laughs> is that um, Gary? You can name names now. No one works there. No, no, that was uh, that was Nick. Oh, really? Not, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Nick Styles, not... Um, oh, yeah, not, not the other Nick. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair... It doesn't really matter that we had about twenty nicks working. We we for did us. have a lot of nicks that did get complicated, and yeah. it's not even that you could shorten it. No, um, I suppose we could have lengthened it and called them Nicholas, but no. that's that's really up to them, I suppose. No. Um, anyway, so yeah, lots of Apex and Aqualung equipment <laughs> is going to pop up on the Ooh. website shortly. So uh, so check it out um, when the interesting stuff drops. I'm sure we'll do something on Instagram or something oh, just to oh, let you guys yeah. know. Um, we also have boxes and boxes of own brand Simply Scuba stuff. Yeah, uh, which we only if, just found out about this. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, that's the thing with working from home, of course. I, I, we don't get to see what's in the warehouse and just sort of laying around in boxes. Um, so, um, so yeah, after the, uh, the, the takeover, as it were, um, yeah, we used to have so much own brands like... Uh, regulated cases and mask boxes and all of that kind of stuff. We still have it. It's just trying to get it booked in um, to the to the new warehouse. So um, yeah, one day there's going to be a lot of sort of own brand stuff coming back, which everybody loved. Yeah. Um, so yeah, now we can finally get it back on the website because apparently yeah, it's just been sitting in a box um, for for a while. <laughs> If I can pick your brains, if you can remember back to probably, well, this time last year, well, February uh-huh. last year, were there yeah. any Mark 1s left or were we still waiting on delivery? Because I know we were, we, we, we'd we done an order for them. Uh... Because in theory, they'll be sat. Because we have, we know we've got the, um, the Simply Scuba watches. Yeah, we've, we've got, got watches. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. 
Um, but do we I can't have the Mark Ones? Because that would be. I can't amazing. remember. Yeah, that would be nice to get to get some Mark Ones back in stock. Um, I don't know whether whether there were any on back order or, or what sort of happened to them. Because yeah, I think we we bought a whole lunch, uh, a whole, whole lunch, lunch. we mm, a whole lunch. a whole bunch of uh, uh, torches before Christmas, and uh, and I think they sold out. And um, yeah, we probably would have placed an order, but whether. Uh, all sorts of COVID and all that kind of stuff went and uh, and we cancelled it I can't remember so there might be that would be That'd interesting be lovely. just yeah. imagine that Mark 1 mate I know I've got my one and I'm just like oh, I'm, I, I have to look after you now you're you limited do. edition um, limited I, I edition used... slash orphan <laughs> well I used to have the prototype the silver one yeah. I have no idea where that one went. That went um, scrap for metal, mate. That that went into some <laughs> landfill or something blatantly. Scrapped it for the for the lithium ion and the, yeah, and the gold exactly. inside. Um, Lord knows. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, in the, in the next coming weeks, uh, you might start to see own brand stuff coming back, which is very exciting. Exactly. Well, yeah, I, like I said to you in the uh, the managers meeting where we found out about this or our email meeting, yeah. I want a wetsuit bag for my sleeping bag okay yeah so but yeah, I, I, just think, want I think we had a few of those i don't want to pay for it i want i want <laughs> you to give me one which yeah. apparently by the sound of things I'll, it's 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 good to go so yeah <laughs> who Jason knows who knows fusion. cool man yeah. yeah right so should i crack on with some social updates go on then all right, so the surface interval vote is now live. So I, again, I mention this every week, but obviously our surface intervals now, you guys and girls can vote for it. Um, we have three that are up. I don't, for some reason, I closed a tab on the actual votes. So let's, let me uh, just k- kill some time. Right, so, so we have... <laughs> oh, you've got the same time as me. Is it never go should... scuba diving when part two? Yeah. The yep. future of scuba diving updated, so mm-hmm. we can look back on those two videos and see if any of that still applies, and then maybe add some more bits. Mark really okay. wants to do that one. He really <laughs> that, wants to just, do it, guys. That that one just involves a lot of research, whereas the other <laughs> ones I can just like write off the top of my head. <laughs> and surprisingly, and we've got things not to say to another diver. Um, I thought that would be the winner, but that's losing by quite a lot. That, that's another quite easy one to, to write because I can literally say a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that you shouldn't say to because a scuba diver. Goggles. I did that once. <laughs> the last time I worked in a shop, I purposely said goggles to a diver just to see what their reaction is. <laughs> they ignored, well, they kind of kind of looked at me a bit funny and then I said flippers and they're like, you're not a diver, are you? And I'm like, yeah. I'm winding you up, mate. <laughs> Why can they not? It's like, it's like April Fool's and it's like, how can they see that you're not just like trolling them? <laughs> yeah. um, because you clearly know that this is not an offensive term, but it's basically an offensive term for scuba divers. It is. They get so touchy. <laughs> and now I know the other one is yoke and a clamp. So that's yeah, another I, one I, I didn't wind know. people up with. I, I honestly, I've never come across that in my years as a professional diver. I've never crossed anyone who says, oh, no, you shouldn't call it yoke or uh, whatever. It's, so it's It's like, well, <laughs> well, what do you call it then? <laughs> the hoojima jig. That's what it's called. Yeah, yeah, the, it? yeah the, the, the worst fitting. The less good fitting. That's all right. <clears throat> yoke, mm-hmm. goggles, masks, flippers. Uh, yep. So go vote on that. Uh, it's on the community tab on our YouTube page. Uh, Ask Mark is, again, doing really, really well since we kind of tweaked it. Um, it does really, really well. You guys, are get, it's getting the most interaction than any of our other Q&As, even when we used to do them live, which is mm. pretty, pretty cool. Uh, so much so, Mark, I'm dropping it to six questions rather than eight, um, okay. which is fine. It's just basically, it just takes so long for me to render, and I've got such, millions of other, you know, I've got a nap. I've got, to, I've got to have a nap <laughs> and also as well the, the, the last Ask Mark 21 yeah mm-hmm. we had a conversation about this off, off yeah. camera or off mic should I say it was a mm. frigging nightmare I had to render that thing like 20 million it just didn't work so no because so, so you use a no, Mac yeah no Mac's <laughs> the best 
<laughs> Return of the Mac. Anyway, yeah, so that's going down to six questions. Um, mm-hmm. Our sub count is now nicely going up. Obviously, where the channel had a six month lull, we kind of came back. I think YouTube is um, finally recognizing that we're not just here for a bit and then we're yeah. going to go again. Um, yep. So, yeah. And also, as well, it does help that the season is now starting. Then, you yes. know, in the UK, you can also go diving as well now. So, Mm-hmm. Yeah, things seem to be a lot brighter than they were before as well. So I think there's lots of things that are all happening at once. But it's it's nice right. to see the channel has got some nice growth again. So thank you, everyone, yes. who's uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel, which is hopefully some of you that are listening to this. But hey, hum, never mind. Um, and the next question, well, not question, the next thing I want to touch upon about, uh, I kind of didn't tell Mark I was going to talk about this briefly. Um, I know, I'm just reading it now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so surface intervals, obviously, uh, and their previous incarnation uh, Friday features, they were kind of, not clickbaity, but they were kind of poking fun a little bit. You know, we'd, we'd push the boundaries um, to it. Then obviously COVID kind of happened. Um, and mm. also as well with those videos, it would be myself interacting if, you know, if I found something just to basically just to annoy Mark and interrupt him and try and <laughs> break his flow of, flow of sentence. Um, so what we're going to try and do, obviously, we're going to try and bring that clickbaiting, not clickbaiting this, but the, not, 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 I'm not saying that they're not fun videos. They are fun and informative. But yeah, we're going to kind of go back to the cheek. We're going to try and be more cheeky with them again. Because a lot yeah. of people, not that anyone's been negative about the, the new version of Saturday. Into, the, the, they're very informative and they are fun. But yeah, I think we're going to try and make them a bit more cheeky. Um, mm-hmm. That probably really won't happen until we get a studio. But yeah. yeah <laughs> like when it comes to titles and stuff, we're going to try and be a bit more bit more cheeky with them and stuff like that and now it makes more sense now that the votes gone back on them because if you mm. basically if you look at the votes there were three the, the, the three votes that were kind of very standardized like titles which were fine but it's just like mm. why would i vote for this one over this one or this one over, you know what yeah. i mean like so yeah i want them all <laughs> yeah so yeah um, we're gonna tr- basically yeah we're not going back to the drawing board with them they're gonna carry on as they are but yeah we're gonna try and revert back to how they were and then when we get a studio <laughs> you'll get me going what scuba diving scuba diving sucks <laughs> over the top of it or whatever and then that's when we get comments going i wish that guy in the background would shut up yeah <laughs> you're welcome guys that's all right. We'll, we'll just sacrifice a, a fixie bike every time you Don't say something obnoxious. Don't dare do that. <laughs> Don't touch my fixie. Don't touch my fixie. <laughs> Fix gear for I'll, the win, mate. I'll, I'll, I'll leave your penny farthing. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a penny. No, I, I'm not that hipster. I'm not that hipster for a penny farthing. Anyway. Yep. Anyway, uh, yeah. And, and also as well, now don't, don't hold me to this, but the deco <laughs> stop is kind of coming back. Okay. to youtube um mm-hmm. hopefully we can get this this one right now that you're listening to will go live on youtube on a sunday morning uh, if mm-hmm. you're watching this on youtube yes it is only audio and it's only <laughs> ever going to be audio for youtube um it's a it's podcast just, it's a podcast <laughs> and, the, and this is like the only reason why i'm bringing it back is because a lot of people miss uh the, the daily deco and obviously not mm. a lot of people listen to... I mean, our podcast is going through the roof. Like, the, the Deco Stop podcast is one of our most popular podcasts on the channel. But I think mm. it can reach more on YouTube. Obviously, it can because we've got a bigger platform there. Um, mm. So it, it is going to be going back, um, hopefully, this Sunday. If not, I've just got to work it in. I've got a, I've got a platform. and I've got a style of everything. Obviously, I've just got to kind of commit to the render and see how long that takes. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah that's very exciting it's good to have that back and i will use timestamps um now i've mastered the timestamp they're they're not that complicated they really are i had to go and get a degree in timestampage from youtube no basically (laughs) i just i always forget them i'm not gonna lie so i purposely put a timestamp thing in the description so when i'm editing that timestamps yes I normally just delete that. Yeah, yeah. So do I. Nine times out of ten, like you don't need a timestamp on. Basically, you only get timestamps on Q and A, and if it's a slightly longer video, other than that, Daily Scuba News does not need a timestamp. No. Service Interval does not need a timestamp. <laughs> but anyway, but this will do. Anyway, yeah. So we've got that. Obviously, the podcast is still going strong. Uh, we're still finding our feet with it. 
the dive brief is very very popular again if you like the dive brief series it goes live on on the wednesday as a podcast before it goes as a video which is pretty cool so yeah if you like the dive brief you want to hear it first yeah just jump onto that but yeah our podcast is going going strong which is lovely hmm. and the last bit of news instagram we are going to test run deco stop live Oh yeah, woo. Um so basically yeah, we've got to test it. We've got to test it. We'll test it early next week, but maybe next week or the week after we, we will do a live stream. So you will be able to watch this show go live as we record it as a podcast on a Friday morning. Um and that's when it's gonna go live. It's not gonna go live any other time. It's basically just got to fit what, what we do here. Um it's not to fit what you guys watch or listen to, unfortunately. So yeah, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Just a bit more interaction over mm. on our Instagram. And that is it for the social channel updates. Exciting okay. stuff. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Uh, so next, next we're moving on to uh, some new stories that caught Sean and my eyes that were not... Not that they're not interesting, but there, there wasn't quite enough of a story to make a Daily Scooby news about, or there was just better news available, basically. Ooh, yeah. uh, so the first one is that new research is showing that octopuses, and yes, that is the um, the plural of octopus, um, octopuses dream, apparently. Oh. So um, so there's there's the current common uh, sort of, not misconception, but sort of belief that with a lot of marine life, they they don't dream like humans and, uh, and other, um, higher organisms. Um, Ooh, fancy. I know. I, I don't think that's even the correct term. It's, it's just, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but researchers have, uh, have been studying octopuses and, uh, and sort of how and when they sleep. And they found that a lot like humans, because we have like, uh, like REM sleep cycles, mm-hmm. uh, where you go into like a deep sleep, and then you have like light sleep and it, it kind of cycles through that. Apparently octopus do the same thing, only instead of like REM, which stands for rapid eye movement uh, in humans, um, they, of course, their their skin changes color. Their skin changes texture as well because they all have that sort of very clever things. Their, um, their suckers um, kind of fluctuate and kind of grip. Their eyes move as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, they, they say it's very similar to... Well, yeah, uh, sort of humans and uh, sort of That's other cool. mammals and some birds, um, and yeah, where, where was it? There, there was a thing where they were basically saying that they they tested to check that they were asleep uh, by like yeah by gently hammering on the tank walls, um, and the and the octopuses showed little to no response compared to when they're in an alert state. So they're like, "Hey, octopus, uh, yeah, are you asleep?" <laughs> like, um, yes. I yeah. was. I was, yeah. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Yeah. I was having a nice dream about... What do they even dream about? Well, that's it. Do um, do robots dream of electric sheep or whatever they do. it is? Um, yeah, what what do uh, what do cephalopods um, dream about? Uh, Who? Going into uh, uh, glass jars in the ocean. <laughs> that's the and, introvert. Um, the introvert. And, <laughs> And punching fish because yeah. that's new and, and more new research that they found. They they just punch fish when they get a bit too close. Yeah. Um, well, the next the, <laughs> the fish mate. The next news story is uh, scuba divers helped solve a uh, a mystery <gasps> where basically divers like almost all around the world have been discovering these huge like a meter round squidgy blobs just mm. gently floating around in the water and scientists have never really been able to like sort of test them and see what the heck it was because they've only ever seen because scuba diver goes down they see something they they come back and they say oh well I, i've just seen this and the scientists are like oh okay where was it it's like oh it's just in the water yeah it's in the um, wet stuff yeah and and they can only analyze pictures and photos and videos so much so the scientists basically said right we're really interested in what this is um and they basically called all sorts of dive centers and dive groups and everything uh sort of all around the world and basically said right if you see one of these 
do us a favor take a sample do this do that and um and yeah because because we need a a sample to try and like really work out what this is and um and divers from um from uh i think it was norway they um they managed to they found one they of course they had this message beforehand and they were like oh okay yeah we'll, we'll take a sample um so they found one of these squidgy blobby things and um and yeah they took samples they uh, they took it home they uh, stored it in their fridge uh, <laughs> and uh, and then handed it over to um uh, to scientists and scientists have said um yeah so it's it's basically an egg but from a uh, a broad tail short fin squid um at sort of various stages of uh, development they're um, they're encased in this like huge disintegrating sort of mucus bubble and uh, and that's what it is so they've been seen like all the way from the surface down to like 70 wow. meters from 8 degrees celsius to 24 degrees celsius they they're all over the place but no one's really, until now, been able to definitively say, "Yeah, you know what? It's this." Yes. And one of the weird things is, is that it's, it's normally that like typical opaque, mucus, clear, transparent, uh, colorless. But they they often have like a, a black like line streak running through them, okay. and they're saying that's often a a streak of uh, of squid ink um, as they're um, like spawned or whatever it is. So um, yeah. You, you learn something new every day. That's cool. So if you see a, a, a huge meter wide bowl of mucus, uh, yeah, it might be a squid egg. Egg. And then you yeah. put it in your fridge. Do not. And then you, you, your roommate <laughs> then bows and cooks it because he thinks it's some exotic. <laughs> puts it on toast. Blech. Blech. Yummy. The, um, the next news story <laughs> is probably the most English... Or like modern low class English thing that I can think of, and this is mainly in the name that they've they've given it. So, um, so basically, the the UK has a uh, a new um, uh, what do you call it? They basically want to monitor marine life here and in our sort of overseas territories and all that kind of stuff. And um, so they've come up with the the Blue Belt program, which is set to cover more than like one and a half million square miles of ocean to basically monitor marine life that is swimming past. So they've come up with these baited remote underwater video stations, which they the acronym very fortunately spells out bruvs. <sighs> That's uh... <laughs> well, bruv, bruv. Isn't it? What you, you know, you know they, you know they fought to right. We need to come up with an acronym. Um, I was like, I can make it spell bruvs, and they're like, yes, that's that's gold. There's there's no better acronym that we can come up with. I reckon they had that name first, and then they're yeah. like, what are we going to call it? We want to use the acronym bruvs. <laughs> so, uh, so, so these things, so there's, there's basically these, uh, yeah, so they're baited. So it's a, a non-intrusive, um, uh, like little station basically that has baited, um, sections. It has two separate cameras so that when fish swim past, it can effectively measure them. Cause if, if you only have one camera, you can't quite get an exact measurement, but if you've got two and you know how far apart the cameras are, you can basically, um, sort of size, uh, the, uh, the fish or whatever that swims past. Mm. And it's, it's just a way for, um, to sort of form a global, un, uh, a global ocean wildlife analysis network, which is a Gowan. Uh, See, Gowan. they didn't, they, they didn't put that acronym in cause it, <laughs> Um, no no so uh, yeah it's going to provide uh, data on ocean biodiversity ecosystems in the seas around uh, Anguilla uh, the Ascension Islands uh, British Antarctic Territory British Indian Ocean Territories uh, BVI Cayman Islands Montserrat Pitcairn um, St Helena Tristan da Cunha uh, all over the place to um, to basically yeah create this database and um, sort of hand it over to uh, to scientists and researchers to basically say, yeah, here we go. And the the program is going to give decision makers the evidence that they need to act decisively um, in support of their sort of blue economy so that you can sort of say, right, well, yes, 
numbers are dwindling uh, you don't see that many of this uh, sort of fish species in this area or you do see mm. them in this area but they're hidden in this direction um so yeah underwater bruvs just monitoring different fish species um and uh, sort of seeing where they are where they're going yeah it'll be and interesting then- what the government will then do is sell that to the fishing industry so yeah. and go chase and kill them. Yeah. Oh, but it's in a marine protected area. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> They're mine. <laughs> mm. Marine protected area means nothing. Yeah. <clears throat> Sad times. Uh, what's what's next? So news updates. So news, news stories that that Sean and I did actually talk about. So the first one that I uh, I spoke about on Tuesday um, was the deepest female cave diver record, um, which was broken by Karen uh, Vander Vander Over. Was it Karen? I, I didn't watch it. Oh, <laughs> Karen Vander Over. And um, and yeah, so she dove down to 236 meters inside the Bushman's Hat cave system in um, in South Africa, and um, yeah, oh, just incredible. Uh, there's a um, there's a documentary that we used to have up on the uh, in the dive center. Um, I think you can watch it on YouTube now uh, about Nuno Gomez back in like 1996 or something, and. Um, and yeah, just how tough it is to be sort of diving down to these depths. Um, but yeah, her, the, yeah, the entire dive took seven hours and eighteen minutes. Uh, she got down. Yeah, she got down to uh, sort of two hundred thirty. That's amazing. Oh yeah, I know. Uh, she, no, of course not. Um, so got down to two hundred and thirty-six meters, and uh, something in her head just basically said, "Yeah, this is about it. I should probably head back." Um, and uh, she said, yeah, it was a tough dive. Um, in the article that I read, I don't think anything bad happens. Uh, there were no complications, but um, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's not easy. Being and then green. coming, yeah, and then coming back up, you, you get to stages where you just have to breathe like pure oxygen just to clean out uh, your systems. And apparently it tastes like really bitter. And you just, ugh, no, the. <laughs> But no, well, well done to her. That's amazing. And um, the next one was, I was quite surprised that I hadn't heard of this until you actually sent me the article, Sean. You're welcome. And, um, and it was a, um, a Buddhist monk had been rescued from a flooded cave system in Thailand, which is unbelievably reminiscent of the 2018 uh, news story where those, uh, those school kids were trapped in the cave system. Um, yeah, this guy, he... He was on an annual pilgrimage. Uh, it's a different cave. Um, it's I can't remember. It, it's far from the um, from the actual uh, what is it Than Than Luang cave system where the um, where the kids were trapped in. Um, so he does this every year. He goes to this cave system. He went in on the Saturday and he was doing his meditating uh, sort of Buddhist thing uh, that he does. And um, on the Sunday unusually high amount of rainfall um started to uh, sort of come down and that of course flooded the cave system he was trapped in there and then it wasn't i think where it's still quite early days and sort of new stories are, are a bit um vague but apparently it wasn't until tuesday afternoon when villagers sort of told people it was like oh I think there's a monk trapped in that cave system. So they, of course, they, they rushed to the cave system. The, well, yeah. Um, so they, um, so yeah, the rescue teams, they, they went to the, uh, to the cave system and they, they didn't want to dive straight in, obviously, because uh, it was still raining at that point. And they were worried about, well, if we go in now, of course, he he won't be. He probably won't be strong enough because he hasn't eaten anything for four days or something. Um, so so they they left it a little bit to like plan and make sure everything was ready. The rain stopped, so they were like, okay, yeah, we can go now. They went in. They got him out. Ugh, I I read one report that said that there was a video of him wearing a scuba mask and he had to swim through a twelve meter underwater section. Um, 
that's unconfirmed i haven't seen it yet but um but i i have seen photos of the man walking out of the cave system with the rescue teams uh, and then later on in hospital just being monitored um wow. so happy ending yes yeah. i i reckon these guys were like right we've we practiced this yeah. um we know exactly what to do we've got all of the equipment we've got all of the expertise yeah we can we can save this guy and um yeah it was quick quick and efficient Indeed. and uh, and he was saved yeah so happy days it's a beautiful beautiful story <laughs> cool, so my two i had so the the first one was also one of those things where it wasn't actually on the radar it was one of mm. my youtube subscribers who's like hey sean hey guys sorry poke 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 <laughs> take a look at this you need to look at this but yeah no no other kind of major kind of scuba diving or major outlets that generally report on uh, you know, scuba diving or marine life and we're actually posting about this. But basically the Maldives um, mm. are in talks, which are ongoing, to uh, open up shark fishing again. Um, yeah, yeah. So you I and I, they... we, we've spoken about this recently. But yeah, um, but, um, it, yeah they were there's, there's no like official they... stuff, is there? Huh? There's no like official, right, like, this is when it's going to happen. It's yeah, not like yeah, when it's, Japan it's... were just like, oh, this is going to happen. It's, it's all like vague. <laughs> yeah, because I was just like, oh, is there any updates? Let me see. And normally there's, you know, a couple of weeks later or a couple of days later, there's an update or anything. No, it's still ongoing. But yeah, basically, mm. I think whether the country's been hit by uh, tourism restrictions due to COVID, mm. um, it's dropped their money quite a lot. And when shark fishing was legal over there, it was the second biggest type of fishing outside of tuna. And it brought the mm. country millions but yeah. now because because it's been protected for what 11 years or something um there's an abundance of sharks and now Go they're going to be killed yeah. or fished should i say Wonderful. So, yeah it's all <clears throat> uh, there mm. are there are petitions um yeah, just google it or go find the um the Maldives story that we talk about over on our channel and there is mm. a petition there for you to sign but yeah i thought it was very interesting they, <sighs> they've gone back from you know, protecting the sharks to now we've got too many of them. Apparently, we've got fish them. Uh, of course, they are, and it's like, oh, the fact that we're getting paid. Oh, what what a happy coincidence! Uh, yeah, this is no, such a, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, they don't care. It's only for the money. It's the sad yeah. truth, unfortunately. It is. <clears throat> until they run out. <laughs> Sorry. Until they run out of sharks, yeah, and that's then. True. Oh no, we love sharks. We're gonna, con yeah. No, you don't. It's roundabouts, mate. Circles and roundabouts. Anyway, yeah. So there's that, and that's ongoing. So there is no real updates to it, but that was a mm -hmm. very interesting story. And the next one was the deepest, uh, the third deepest trench in the world. Uh, mm. I can't remember what it was called. Dem Dem Deep or something. Um, basically, that has now been, the seabed of that has been dived with a manned submarine or submersible, which is really, mm. really cool. And two days after they did that expedition, they located the wreck of the USS Johnston, which is an old World War II wreck, um, which is now mm. officially the world's deepest wreck. And that sits at around about just over six kilometers below, uh, which <laughs> is really, really cool. So, yeah, the team spent, they did two eight hour dives on the wreck. And then once they'd kind of, they normally, what they normally do is it's a look, no touch scenario, but. Mm -hmm because they never know how long they're going to go back there. Uh, they took samples, and, and rightfully so. And then basically, once the submersible came up from the wreckage, uh, they laid a reef in, uh, obviously mm. in honour of the, the lost souls on there. But yeah, I just mm. thought it was really cool. So this team, yeah, they, they, they've dived or they've manned the third deepest trench in the world. Um, and then literally two days later, they found, located the world's deepest wreck yeah which i think is awesome and it's literally it's double the depth or pretty much double the depth of the titanic and um it basically the ship itself i don't know whether it's split but like the back half actually goes into deeper waters but they mm. physically couldn't go any basically i think the the sub was like right we need to hit this six six k mark six kilometer mark we can't really go any deeper Mm. Um, for some reasons so they couldn't really investigate it but technically the back half of the wreck is that little bit deeper as well which is very interesting what's what's more interesting is the fact that they they say 
So no human remains or clothing were found during the expedition, and the team laid wreaths before and after the dives. So how did they know to lay wreaths before the dive? So basically, the same vessel in 2019 spotted it on sonar, or they spotted ah. a wreck on sonar. So even so though they this knew is the world's something first was there. Technique. They, they knew roughly the area of, what it, of where this wreck was, but they weren't 100% sure on what it was and how truly, how gotcha. deep it is. They just knew that a wreck was there. Hmm. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, they basically went back to the to the, to the strike and was just like, well, hold on, we've, we've done the deepest trench. It's in the same area. Why don't we go and have a look yeah, at that yeah. as well? So, huh. yeah, it's amazing. It's good. Uh, but that's my stories and there's no real updates to them because they've already been done yeah yeah i mean just the the maldive story we'll just keep an eye on that yeah um, definitely that's that's something yeah it's very interesting that not a lot of major news articles in the scuba dive world really picked up on it it's very uh, it's a very bizarre uh, one i think it's it's one of those things where i, I don't really want to write an article if there isn't like a definitive mm. like ending it's yeah, it just sense. kind of half news where mm. it's like, well, this could happen. It, it, I mean, let's be honest, it's going to happen. Um, yeah. I'll be very impressed if like a, an online petition makes the, the Maldive government go, oh, you know what? Yeah, 10,000 people in a country 10,000 miles away have, have signed a petition. Uh, we won't do this because our country is suffering. Um, yeah, we don't because it's, like ten thousand people, we we don't want the millions that this brings. I know, because that was that was a um, a guy I used to know in the in the Red Sea, and he petitions um, sort of governments sort of out there, and he was like, "Well, let me literally show you the numbers, tourism that's bringing in." Um, sort of scuba divers and snorkelers to come and see these sharks earns you much more money mm. than actually, yeah, sending fishing boats out to hopefully catch sharks and then export it. It's uh, it's actually making you more money to like stop people from catching them. Um, and eventually, I think he did actually get them to do the right thing out there. But yeah, now that tourism, we're not going to see the same levels of tourism as we uh, as we used to. Um, not for a long time. Yeah, it is. It's tough, but well, we get mean... fined, don't we, if we leave the UK? Apparently, at the moment, I read somewhere that if you pay five hundred pounds, you can get some special passport or something. And but depending on the country that you want to go to, you have to go through different tests if you want to uh, sort of go there. And it's just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah weird time weird time to I, yeah life. i'm i'm not going on a foreign holiday for a while um, no definitely not <clears throat> definitely not anyway let's let's anyway move on to the pandemic part <laughs> what is your product of the week so my product of the week i couldn't remember if i've done this one or not um but i'm drawing attention back to the uh, to the apex mtx r regulator not the rc but the standard r version because it is a, a no-nonsense, tough regulator that you can just take anywhere. So if you need a set of regulators that you can use at home, because let's face it, we're probably going to be doing a lot of local diving um, in our future. If you want a tough set of regulators that aren't bonkers heavy at that point, but they they have every conceivable feature that you could possibly want then the mtxr is a wonderful set of regulators it was it was originally designed based on the mtx regulator which is the military version so they made it so it was no nonsense no twiddly fiddly bits that you can bend or break or ruin your breathe it was this is it Put it in your mouth and breathe, mm. and um, and that's basically what they made the uh, the MTX R, uh, R the recreational version uh, sit on it. 
So the first stage itself, five port swivel turret, which is my favorite. So you have four low pressure ports on a swiveling turret that rotates around. And then you have a fifth port that actually has a, um, a sort of a rubber cap on it uh, to protect it if you're not using it. But that's probably the most practical in my mind because you can use it on singles, you can use it on twins, you can use it on side mount stage cylinders. It's, it's a very a very practical first stage and, um, and then you go down to the second stage itself it has a metal front cover with over molded rubber so it's tough and it has that metal that can help act as a bit of a heat sink and um, yeah no no twiddly bits on it so you don't fuss around with anything it uh, it just works one thing is is that it's a little bit stiffer to um to breathe from compared to most recreational regulators but because it's a cold water regulator that's it's kind of already set up for cold water so it's far less likely to free, uh, free flow when it uh, sort of hits cold water so yeah if you're if you're diving over here if you're planning on diving in some really cold water then you can do a lot worse than the uh, the MTXR it's a, it's a tough regulator and uh, it's it's been put through a lot of testing especially cold water testing uh, they actually showed us videos of this thing like trying to freeze over they put it in freezing cold water and just purged it the first stage you start to see ice build up but it never interrupts with the uh with the action and um and the mechanics of the first stage so very very clever definitely worth uh, checking out uh, apex mdx are a, uh, a good all-rounder and of course you can dive it in warm waters as well so yeah i'm what seeing a lot volcanoes more... uh, if you go volcano diving it yeah out? yeah yeah, it's uh, it will it will void your warranty, um, and it will become a single use regulator, um, and it, it has a, a maximum depth of like point one centimeters. But it'll, <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> I, I don't think it's worth it. Um, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. But cool. yeah, I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing a lot of people online on uh, sort of social media, Instagram, and all that kind of stuff. They're they're now diving on yeah MTXRs um, because they are just a tough regulator um, and a, a good sort of all rounder. So cool. yeah, definitely worth checking out. Sweet, I'll get mine today. Can't wait to mm -hmm. work in the shower. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so Mark, mm -hmm. we um. Based on that news article about uh, the deepest dive when they found the deepest wreck and they went to the deepest trench or the third deepest trench in the world, mm. the 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 um, the chap Kelvin Murray he said it was quite a nice thing to find something new underwater, mm. basically to kind of to actually go explore an area where no human has been before and how how rare that is in these days so i want to put to you this question has the golden age of scuba diving been and gone from like the adventurous side of things you know finding and discovering new things has that gone or is there more to come other than finding plastic <laughs> yeah <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I think we're definitely in a, a different age. You you go from like the, the gold age and then you get to the sort of silver age and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I, I think we, we definitely have gone through a, a sort of a culture shift, as it were, when it comes to scuba diving, because divers don't tend to bring pry bars and hammers with them when they go diving anymore uh, at least or at least nobody that i know who isn't in prison um don't <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't um don't do it it just it it kind of it was the thing i mean if you watch um jacques Cousteau's, what was it the uh, the silent world and um and I was watching that for the first time and he was diving on this shipwreck um, that sort of local fishermen had, um, had sort of like recommended that he go to and and he was diving around it. It's like, I recognize this place. And um, and he gets to the ship's bell and he's smacking the coral off of it. And it's the uh, it's the thistle gorm. And you're like, oh, of course it is. Now that you see it, um, you start to recognize places. Yeah. And um and yeah, there, there was another thing. I can't remember what I was watching. And um, and he said, um, oh, yeah, and the, the dive... Oh, that was it. It was on the, the US Concordia. 
um, or I, can't, no, I don't think it was the US, but it was the the Concordia um, shipwreck, that uh, that cruise ship, and it was it was documenting like sort of how it happened, how it crashed, and what what happened after it. And one of the sections was like that night, and uh, sort of following on, scuba divers were just getting in and just taking whatever they could, uh, but they also took the ship's bell, and he said, "Who takes the bell?" No, that's a huge thing for scuba divers. Um, I don't honestly know why, but I think it is that the ship's bell would traditionally have the ship's name engraved on it, yeah. and there would it would be like a one of a kind. So if you got the ship's bell, you you almost like claimed it as your own. Yeah. So um, yeah, that that was kind of a uh, a thing that people did. So. Um, yeah, I, I think that age is kind of going, but I th- I think there there still is that uh, for for a lot of th- I think that that generation of divers they're still diving, but to a sort of a lesser degree. Whereas the the new generation, oh pardon me, is a bit more sort of eco conscious, mm. and we're taught a bit more heavily in that yeah, look but don't touch. And uh, you, you don't take souvenirs. And um, so I think, yeah, we, we're definitely transitioning from that age to to a new age where it's a bit more sort of sport diving, where, yeah, you kind of, you go down, you don't touch anything. Um, there, there is still stuff down there that, um, that hasn't been discovered. There's, um, oh, I can't remember what the, uh, the exact number was, but like six billion dollars worth of uh, sort of shipwrecks still out there undiscovered Mm -hmm. but i think a lot of the the nice shipwrecks have been found (laughs) (laughs) um it's it's quite easy to go on a dive in the bahamas or somewhere Mm. and okay it's it's a pretty boring dive didn't find anything pop back up okay let me refill the tanks and sort of go diving in the next quadrant um whereas when it's like yeah the arctic and um <laughs> and like sort of awful awful waters it's you need to be quite determined to physically jump in the water and scan every inch of the seabed for any um sort of evidence yeah. um and yeah when it's six kilometers down yeah you need some pretty specialist stuff and that's going to cost a lot of money to scan the seabed out there so i think the the kind of the future of this like exploration is going to be in rovs um whereas for us scuba divers with a max depth of 30 meters um yeah i think most of the stuff has been discovered um I think one of the one of the future things is like in artificial reefs and artificial shipwrecks mm. um, because that's happening more and more. So we're seeing instead of just shipwrecks and natural reefs, we're seeing artificial reefs which are turning into sort of underwater monuments yeah. and uh, sort of purposely built um, – sort of reef ecosystems um so yeah hopefully we're going to see sort of more of those which will be sort of an attraction to us that bring people and also in water uh, sort of inland stuff as well we're seeing more and more of these deepest swim pools which granted it's a swimming pool you can only go there so many times before it gets a little bit monotonous but um yeah, I mean, I've been to Nemo Thirty Three a few times, mm. and um, yeah, every now and then they'll throw something in, like a I mean, dead body. Last time, I'm, <laughs> yeah, um, last time, um, a car. they'll they'll put like a car in. So yeah, it's just something they they strip all the seats and the electronics and uh, sort of everything out. Uh, oh, and all the, the water, fun stuff you can't see and, and tend to drive it. Yeah, the the water was noticeably green um, compared to the last time I was there. Um, but yeah, it's it's just something different um, for us to sort of go and see and do. So now we're seeing Y forty and all that. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I think that will be a um, more of an attraction instead of yeah going down looking for undiscovered shipwrecks. I, I don't think we have that um, to look forward to anymore. I think most of the interesting, obvious ones have been found. 
because yeah. Google Earth, you get people who are scouring every inch That's of true. Google Earth images just looking for stuff. And uh, so the people in the areas, yeah, I granted there's a lot of ocean out there, um, but I think most of the interesting stuff is gone. It's I think there's a lot less of the sort of 1970s 1980s kind of treasure hunter you talk to local fishermen you look through the history books you try and track down this pirate ship that um went to such and such island and then you're trying to work out where the patterns to try and work out where things are i don't think there are that many um of those sorts of shipwrecks to uh, to be discovered anymore unfortunately so yeah i think the the golden age i think has uh, has come to an end um now we're moving yeah now we're moving into a, a more digital age where yeah the the robots are, are doing it and uh, we're sending rovs to check things and and the new undiscovered shipwrecks they're deep so yeah. it's yeah it's it's for the robots and the Oh, yeah, they'll they'll start to discover stuff now, and then <clears throat> they take over the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll go to our underground bunkers. Can't wait! <laughs> Can't wait to be used as a battery. <laughs> cool. All right. That's cool. If you're uh, watching this on YouTube, if I actually manage to upload it, what are your mm. what are your thoughts about the golden age? Golden age of scuba diving has it finished? Uh, or is there more to come? Let us know in mm -hmm. the comments. Uh, that's it, isn't it? That is Deco Stop Done for another week. Yeah. All right. Cool, man. Well, thanks for listening. And thanks for kind of watching on YouTube, I guess. If it didn't get <laughs> up on YouTube, hopefully it is. <clears throat> if not, it doesn't matter. You, you're never going to know because you're never going <laughs> to see it. To hear it. So there you go. Uh, Mark, do the outro. You, go, you go, want go. me... I'm... I've been staying quiet trying to make you do okay, it. Okay, I'll do the outro today. Okay, so if you want to get the latest updates or the latest products about the uh, everything that's to do with scuba diving, you've got to check out simplyscuba.com. The universes, universe is the best, <laughs> most loved and cherished scuba diving online retailer. Um, and also as well, uh, our Teespring store. So if you want some merch to make you stand out of the crowd, uh, we do have our Teespring store. Again, if you're watching slash listening to this on YouTube, uh, you will find a banner for that below. Um, uh, Klarna, now, Mark, you have a wonderful, wonderful way of Klarna. Let's talk about Klarna. I, I don't. Uh, but Klarna, basically, uh, if you're not tight on money, <laughs> but you need some, you, you know, you want to get some gear and you want to spread it over a couple of months. It's one of those type of things, one of those funding type things. But they do a cool thing where, isn't it up to, is it up to 30 days? So if you make a purchase, you don't pay for it for the first 30 days. So there's, so there's a, a few, turn. yeah, you can there's do a few options. Straight away, can't you? Um, it's basically a 0% finance option for yeah. you. So if it's over £35, um, you can choose to offset your payment. So you can place your order and then... 30 days after it's been shipped you then have to pay it so you don't have to pay for it up front basically yeah. so when it arrives if you like oh. it and it fits and it's it's the right color it's exactly what you want then yeah you go into Klarna and then you pay you pay your bill but then if you if you don't like it you can return it and money never really has to leave your account so it's, yeah. it's a great uh, sort of option for you but yeah. if you're buying something a bit more expensive um like a set of regulators or a dive computer if it's over 100 pounds then you can choose to basically cut your payment into three equal slices uh, again not percent finance so you're not paying any extra than the uh, than the listed price but you basically you pay for one third of it up front and then you get your your piece of gear, and then you um, you sort of choose when to pay those remaining two thirds. So it's it's a better way of sort of spreading out that cost. So it makes things a bit more affordable instead of one big upfront um, sort of cost. Cool. You took the words right out of my mouth. And hello, <laughs> I hope you're doing. No, this is Darcy. Hello, Darcy, Darcy Welcome has to woken the up. Stop podcast, Darcy. Uh, <laughs> And also as well, Ask Mark, like I said before, it's doing really, really well. There's only six questions a week now. Um, 
But yeah, get your questions in for Ask Mike. It's pretty easy to do. Just when you type your question in, in any type of our social media, just add the hashtag Ask Mark, and then we will do a Liam Neeson. We will find it. We will track mm. it down. And we won't kill it. We'll just add it to the show if we really, really like it. Um, <laughs> we'll so, yeah, just talk about it. questions in for that. And that's <laughs> obviously anything about scuba diving, obviously. Um, but if you want to know some hiking bits or some camera bits, we, we know some bits about that as well. So. Yeah, no, nah, anything, any anything. question that you have any. about anything. If you want to talk about religion, put no. it in there. We'll, we'll do oh, our oh, best. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, no. I know that that will be a fun hashtag, a fun bear to <laughs> poke. Um, oh, no. <laughs> good way to alienate. <laughs> yeah, cool. And that's it, guys. That is the episode of Deco Stop Done. I'm going to end yeah. it, Mark. Okay. Bye. See you later. <laughs> end. The end. No, thank, thank you for watching and or listening, guys. Maybe um, listening. And, thank you for and listening and maybe watching. Safe but watching diving. our audio bars go up on the screen. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Anyway, safe diving. <laughs> I said it. Stay classy, scuba divers. <laughs> okay, be, that's the best ending ever. <laughs> The Deco Stock Podcast is produced and recorded by Simply Scuba, the UK's number one dive store. Visit today at simplyscuba.com.